Welcome back. Joseph O'Brien there in the centre. He'll be on a tapestry in the third group. This is a fascinating group in terms of the fillies uh, here. Bye Bye Birdie's a horse who did win last season, wore headgear. Michael Hussey will be riding her dark blue cap. Dazzling for uh, Colm O'Donoghue, a red cap. She was a bit disappointed, wasn't she, last year, Dazzling? Yeah, I loved her debut. And, you know, you can make an excuse for her on her second start. She got badly hampered. But, um, you know, she was she was well beaten by Flying Jib, who's a nice another nice filly of Dermot Wells. You know, you should have to go down as disappointing, but given her pedigree and everything else, she's a, she's a full sister to Roderick O'Connor. You'd hope that she'd step up um, as a three-year-old when she goes up and trip, but she certainly sets out this season with a little bit to prove. OK. Wonderfully is also in this particular group, beaten a couple of times last year, and... Very interesting tapestry who was beaten by Rosina last year in the group one but still remains a potential Oaks and Guineas filly for more Oaks perhaps. Definitely you know to, to Aiden wouldn't necessarily have had the deepest group of two-year-old fillies he's ever had last year and I think tapestry was probably the pick of them. Uh, was good in the debutante um, and you know may, maybe a little bit unlucky in the Moy Glare. Got boxed up at just the wrong time. Uh, finished third, got promoted to second subsequently on the steward's inquiry but uh, yeah exactly but she's about a rumpled stillskin who was a fast mare um, to be fair to her she won the Mike Lair um, but yeah you'd say you'd say that probably 10 furlongs 12 perhaps might suit a little bit better than a mile but uh, I think she's their big hope in terms of a filly you know you'd you'd like to see her work well here because you know the other two you know granted they're they're all the other three you're all um, well wonderfully and bye bye birdie both won group trees Dazzling, you know, showed up well in listed company, but Tapestry, in terms of form shown, was the best of these last year, and you'd hope that she'd show that she's progressed well from two to three and works nicely here. Indeed, let's go back to Gary at the track. Tapestry, the certainly the horse of we're going to focus on in this uh, little group here, group three. But uh, if we get Gary's take on the on, on the second group we saw there, Gary, some some big names, the likes of Leading Light. And uh, due diligence, and of course, uh, Jeffrey Chaucer as well in that second group. Indeed, and so yeah, Jeffrey Chaucer just seemed to do everything on the bridal air, as Kevin said, wasn't asked really any sort of a question, but you have to be happy enough with what you saw from him, I would have thought. One who did catch the eye towards the front rank on the left was the one with the brown cap orchestra. Galileo horse who seemed to do everything pretty easily as well. Some of the other horses uh, are jocked up in the parade ring at the moment, so I would have thought the uh, the last two groups will probably be hot enough on the heels of this one, hopefully. Tapestry looks really well, though. Really has come on over the the winter, certainly of the four fillies in this group, she'd be the most impressive to look at and on her form as well. Legitimate Guineas contender. Didn't get the run of the race, as we know, in the Moigler Stud Stakes last year. It's when the filly of Charlie Hills just started running about a little bit in the closing stages that day. The winner, Clyde Britton's filly, of course, very impressive on the day, but I think the tapestry camp came away from that race with a feeling, a sense of what might have been. Going down nice and steadily there in company with Wonderfully, who was kept quite busy as a juvenile. Bye bye birdie with Michael Hussey riding on the left of shot there in the dark blue cap, another one that Plenty of race course action as a juvenile. And Colm O'Donoghue, the other jockey involved here, he's in the red cap on board a horse called Dazzling, who was a winner of a maiden here at the Curragh as well. Quite a few people have stayed around to take in the action here after racing. I think quite a few people actually came in late in the card itself just to see this and Fair play to everyone concerned. It's been easy enough to get the information on the horse. There's quite a lot of people wandering around here with the 
the sheets outlining what's what. And just the four, this time in group number three. Thank you, Gary. Yeah, group three coming up then. Bye Bye Birdie, Michael Hussey, Dazzling, and Colin O'Donoghue. Wonderfully. Seamus Heffern of the green cap and Joseph O'Brien on tapestry with the white cap, as you can see, for group three coming up next. So two groups after this one, don't forget, including Verrazano, great home winner in America. It's a big fancy for last year's Kentucky Derby. And Verrazano will be in the fourth group. Well, with a horse called Great White Eagle as well, so fascinating. I think that fourth group is going to be a very interesting one, Kevin, isn't it, in a few moments' time? Yeah, definitely. Some very eye-catching horses there. And one of the forgotten horses maybe is Darwin. You know, he looked an absolute, he looked a potential star in his first couple of starts. Another American import. And I uh, hope he'll be looking to get back on track this season after finishing on a, on a little bit of a low note. Mm. Uh, the fact that this is such a smaller group... Um, just guessing here, but the fact that it's a smaller group would suggest that maybe they're going. These might do a little bit more. Do you go a bit quicker, yeah. Poss see. Possibly, we'll, we'll soon see. Okay. So they are down there at the seven furlong, and they are just beginning to go into a gentle trot now. So tapestry sets off at the back. The white cap, Joseph O'Brien. Bye bye, Birdie. And uh, Michael Hussey in the dark blue cap towards the right. We've got the. Red cap there as well of Conor O'Donoghue, dazzling in the red cap and wonderfully in the green cap, Seamus Heffernan, as they just amble through the opening quarter mile. I think, I might, been, I, think I might have been wrong with my guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping they're going to quicken up a bit, but just a gentle pace. Bye bye birdie on the right, white sleeves, dark blue cap, the red cap there is dazzling, green cap in behind. That is wonderfully, and Seamus Heffernan and, and Tapestry. The figure of Joseph O'Brien there at the back, the white cap, Joseph. Tapestry just settling in behind. Bye bye, Birdie. Will they be now about two furlongs from the finish? And this group of four fillies make their way up the home straight here at the Curra. And it's still bye bye, Birdie on the right, alongside Dazzling, the red cap. Nice piece of work in behind for. The green cap wonderfully, and you can see Tapestry effortlessly making up ground towards the right. They are quickening a little bit, to be fair to me. Yeah, they are, aren't they? Bye bye, Birdie. Certainly being nudged out by Michael Hussey. Here comes Tapestry this side, wonderfully going far side. And yeah, they certainly have raised the tempo, haven't they, this final furlong? Now, that's exactly what you want for, as a trainer for a piece of work. You want them all to finish in a line. You don't want anything going hacking all over everything else. That's, that's not good. You know, as a piece of work, you want every horse to, to benefit and come forward from a piece of work like that. And that's pretty much, if, if you could ask Aidan O'Brien for how he, how he wanted that gallop to go, I'd say he would have, would have described something like that. You know, you want every horse to have a positive experience and it'll come forward from it. Yeah, I did like Tapestry there. She moved up quite nicely without, without really being asked. And yeah, it was nice work from her and wonderfully, to be fair. Um, the, the other one, which was the one that dropped off, was that Bye Bye Birdie? Bye Bye Birdie, just slightly dropped off at the final furlong, yeah, the yeah. dark blue cap, Michael. And these are all good fillies, now Bye Bye Birdie's a Group 3 winner, you know, the, and I think if, you, if you're on Tapestry, at the post reader of the Classics, either of the Phillies Classics, I'd be perfectly happy with that. That was groundwork. Okay, third gallop is complete. Two more to come. Now, of course, uh, the jockeys involved there are not in the final two gallops. We've got a few different names in the, in the fourth group, haven't we? Uh, Juniper Tree, Timmy O'Sullivan, Household Cavalry is a horse I don't know. That's an unraced horse. He's an, he's an Oasis Stream half rudder to Eagle Mountain. 230,000 guineas as a yearling. Mikey Butler will be on him. Blackstone. Uh, unraced, cold by Fastnet Rock. Katie O'Farrell, uh, Great White Eagle, was he the horse who went off favourite for the middle part? Yes, he's a, he's a two-year-old I really liked, and I was disappointed with him at Newmarket. I think the ground might have been a little bit too soft for him. I absolutely loved his, his first two wins, he's a real nice colt, but uh, he was undoubtedly disappointing in the middle park. I'd hope he'd bounce back from it this year on a, on a sounder surface. Verrasano, we, uh, we've mentioned already, 
Jose Guerra is going to be riding work on Verasano. Darwin, another horse you were talking about. Robson de Aguilar on board that one. Fountain of Youth will be Jamie Heffern and Seamus, his son, and Albert the Bold. Uh, Rio, Rio Cassano, he's been there a few years, isn't he, at uh, Valley Doyle. He's on Albert the Bold. We shall take a break before the fourth and fifth groups go down.